If you grew up watching Australia genre film, marauding packs of bullies. You heard my car. Roam the highway looking for people to fuck with. We were saying things I've never seen again. Uh, it took about 10 years, so it was quite a journey. Quite the passion project. Yeah, I gave up about halfway through, <laughs> I have to say. And um, at first it started off as a television series, uh, like a six-part of uh, chronicling maybe you know, each of these guys and a few others. And then um, we just had no interest at all. And subsequently I sent a 100-page research document that I'd compiled, like a, profiles on, on the, the key people and sent that to Tarantino just for him to read more than anything else. It wasn't for him to become involved at all because the project was dead at that point. And he literally said, come on over, I'll do whatever you need to get it up. And that kind of reinvigorated me to kind of really push forward. There was just this certain flavor about uh, uh, the Aussie exploitation. I call it Aussie exploitation. Uh, as soon as we shot Tarantino, I just sat there going, this is gold, this is gold, mm. this is gold, this is gold. And I thought we were up. And yep. it still took us four years or so. It was interesting that here they people couldn't see the value of Tarantino. Mm -hmm. And I was going, don't you understand that he's a tastemaker? You know, I mean, cinema nerds all over the world will just go and see Australian films because he tells you to. Yep. That should be good enough. And it actually took um, Americans and English who actually invested in the film. We got a really hefty pre-sale from, um, from the UK and the US, which ultimately triggered the final bit of funding here. So Tarantino did, you know, was responsible in the end, his profile. I just, I had a whole lot of poster art and I thought that no one would ever get to see it. And I just said to Marcus, who I'd worked with at Mad Men, the guy who, um, who did all the animations, a guy called Marcus Cobbledick, and he'd done all the moving menus on the DVDs and covers that I'd been putting together of these films. And um, I just gave Marcus all this poster art and said, let's just have fun and let's give this thing kind of, we needed to set up a sensibility and we just wanted it to be fun. We wanted it to have a pop culture kind of feel. And I wanted it to move like a music video. I, I mean, I. I don't think of myself as a documentary filmmaker because I've never made a documentary in my life. I've made music videos. So I kind of wanted to bring a real rock and roll sensibility to the project. And part of that was also knowing that we only had 100 minutes and we had to cram as much stuff in there as possible because if we didn't, no one would ever get to see it. And that was kind of the hardest thing, the, the kind of the push-pull pull between information and entertainment. Because you know, when you're making a doco on American cinema, you're pretty aware that everyone knows every film you're talking about. But here, I didn't know if anyone would know any of the films. So you kind of have to give some information before you cut to the funny stories. And that was, that was the most difficult thing, kind of trying to gauge that. And we had, an awesome, we had 150 hours of interviews. We had about 150 hours of feature film material. We had about 50 hours of archival material on top of that. And culling that down was a pretty big chore. We actually had live ammunition fired at actors. They pronounced me dead. In America, we just call that insane. Uh, the Australian cinema kind of is, is kind of the, the whipping boy at the moment, and, and it's getting kicked while it's down. And you know, it, it's a, it's an easy target. And hopefully, you know, here's a documentary that celebrates Australian film in some form. So that's always a good thing. And literally, I just made it because I realised that there were very talented filmmakers out there. Uh, who, because they worked in genre, never got the respect they deserved, who were just as talented when it came to, you know, understanding film as our more lauded filmmakers. And, you know, they never got the respect they deserved and hopefully this gives them, a, you know, a slight, you know, begrudging respect. And if people wander into the video library and want to see a good film from this doco or a bad film from this mm. doco, then, you know, it's done its job. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think that it's important that this particular subsection of Australian film industry, uh, film industry history, the mid 70s through to 1980, has been told by Mark, because the first person who tells the story really sets the historical record. So, hopefully, what we have here in Not Quite Hollywood is the the story of how we got going again from the other side of the ledger, looking at it from an audience interaction the way in which films are meant to be seen by people who like them, by things that are going on that are happy, exciting, fun, you know, violence, sex, humour. Those are the sort of things that people want, not dreary, depressed, insomniac, drug addicts sitting around, <laughs> slitting their wrists. Again and again.